Alright. We're ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Alright, so welcome to KSP's Press Club for April 2017. Um, we're excited to learn something about writing and acting in plays and films with you today, hopefully. And we look forward to finding out more about the world of Marty Dennis. Um, I'm Guy Salvage and I'm facilitating KSP uh, Press Club today. And these are my lovely cadet journalists behind me who will be interviewing you. And from right to left, Annabelle, Lauren, Jade, Hannah. Annabelle's going to lead us off, start us off with the first question. Um, did you always want to be a writer and an actor, and what other careers did you consider? Ooh, um, <clears throat> I don't know if I wanted to be a writer or actor. I think I think I just I did a lot of drawing when I was a kid, when I was you know um, wanting stuff to do. I wrote a few poems and few and a few really bad pop songs. <laughs> That I thought were amazing. I even I even um, sang one of my pop songs in a in a little cassette and taped myself and I kept it under my bed so no one could hear it. And about five years later, I discovered it and threw it out. That'd be worth a bit of money now. Do you know what the cassette tape is? Yeah. <laughs> so I, don't know, I did lots of different stuff, I reckon. And when I was when I went to um, Wapa, uh, I was I was started off doing classical ballet, doing dancing more. So I choreographed when I was in high school, I choreographed um, the school musicals. So I think I did something like, I didn't do Calamity Jane. Guys and Dolls? Oh yeah, Guys and Dolls, um, stuff like that. So really it was just anything, anything mm. that kept me busy, drawing, dancing. All that, yeah. that's... Yeah, I think I started writing when I was about 19. When I was uh, went for a trip over to Europe, and I was in Germany, and just started writing a couple of plays, and and that was they they sort of got bigger. So yeah. yeah. Why did you choose to be a writer and an actor? I think it was just easy when when I when I was kind of trying different stuff when I was in my teenage years. I reckon I just kept doing it because I enjoyed it. You know, it was just all storytelling. You just keep um, doing stuff that you like, I guess, when you're in your late teens, your twenties. You just kind of keep keep doing it. You know, it wasn't wasn't it didn't annoy me yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, was Sydney a good place to film and write in? And did you live in Sydney long? Yeah, I did. I lived in Sydney for about eighteen years. Um, so I got over there when I was about twenty one because Perth was a little bit quiet with the theatre and the film scene, it's a small city, so, and I got offered um, representation as an actor over there through an agency, yeah, so it's someone, an agent, someone that can, you know, brings up, gets you auditions and stuff, so that was, that's a really good connection, you need that, no matter what you do, mm. and so Sydney was bigger, and there's lots more stuff happening. Having said that, though, I didn't, I didn't work a lot in Sydney as a writer, I worked more in Adelaide, so after about eight, nine years, um, people, smaller companies from Adelaide or Brisbane, they connected with me and they actually encouraged me to go out of Sydney mm. and get in, do, do more Adelaide stuff. Okay. Very good. Hugh Jackman's a famous actor now, but you worked with him early in his career. What was it like working with him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I went to school with Hugh, so we went to Whopper together. So we, we, so when I worked with him, it was just like working with an old friend that was really annoying. <laughs> so I have to. <laughs> so it was good fun. I mean, he played my older brother, and you know, because he is about three years older than me in real life. And I guess when I wrote the stuff that that we did together, um, I. It, it was just easier to work with the people that I'd worked with in the university system in Wapa. So a couple of the guys were two years older than me uh, in, in Wapa and um, a guy uh, uh, joined in that I'd done a few commercials with because I acted in about 40 commercials um, between um, Australia and New Zealand. And so through that you kind of just keep meeting different people. and. Um, so working with Hugh uh, was easy 
because we we knew how to talk to each other and you know we we only there was a really low budget film so we didn't have a lot of time to stand around we didn't get a Winnie Winnie Bay though which is what he sits in now <laughs> we didn't get a caravan to sit in and wait and stuff somebody knock on the door you know come to set and you wander there and everyone's waiting but anyway, that we did we only had one take as well for a lot of the stuff so when you're working on a really low budget uh, film you really have to concentrate hard and so you need to surround yourself with people that that are your friends and that you worked with you know in the 2000s you wrote some plays what inspired you to do so and how did you come up with the names um, so some quirky names for you. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I've a, a few people have liked my titles and I, I've I really like titles of, of plays because I grew up with some learning really old plays like plays from the 50s like Streetcar Named Desire and um, um, a few Sam Shepard plays so US um, playwrights and noticed that their that their titles of their plays were really the essence of the story or the essence of what was happening in the theatre. So the Duck Shooter is actually a play that was based on a film that was based on a play. So it's gone through three different, you know, um, every what you call them. Iterations. Iterations. <laughs> <reasons. laughs> um, so it was the first play I wrote in 95. Actually, I actually wrote it in 93, 94, but it's got 95 on the... And that was called Lime Green Jelly. And that was the same story. And Lime Green Jelly represented the cup of Lime Green Jelly that was given to the father character that passed away and so that represented the last thing that he ate and the last thing that he consumed this thing that's high in sugar so <laughs> so when I trans transferred into Westonville Kings uh, re adapted it to a film I tried to keep that space that one thing that everyone Westonville Kings was based in a pub that one space where men talk and going down into a the, under the pub where it was not where customers go and, and so just trying to keep um, something that was still reminded us of the essence of what was happening and the duck shooter so is the third title this is all the same play really about how brothers talk and how men sort of communicate and the duck shooter was based on a um, uh, the duck shooter is kind of an English tradition, isn't it? I mean, we don't in Australia we don't talk about duck shooting much, do we? It's kind of a, a highbrow sport that is kind of mat driven in the mat in the masculine world, and it's some might say is a little bit cruel and a little bit outdated. So the duck shooter is about that something that's a bit cruel, a bit of a ritual that's outdated and. It's not really connected to the essence of what this group of people are about. So it was a reminder that what these guys are doing is, is really quite hard, coming together and communicating. Is that a really long answer? Yeah, that's probably going to tie into our next yeah. question, isn't it? But. Um, what inspired you to keep the one storyline? Because usually when I'm writing, I find it very difficult to keep like one storyline and keep it in my head. So what inspired you to keep it as that one thing? Um, money. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a big, I wrote the first play, it was about a 75 minute play, and it was something that I was obviously interested in when I was 19 and 20, you know, the way boys talk. And when I was um, given the opportunity to adapt it, it was about 10 years later, and I had to come up with different ways to deal with those issues, and I was a lot older. Well, and I wasn't really, I was like 26 or 25, so I wasn't really that much older. But it was, um, but it was still, I was still going through different things. So as you get older, you go through different stuff. And you go, oh, I can actually, you know, for example, um, I had a, a female role that was the bartender, and she was an older motherly role that was actually cut out of the film. She had three scenes, which I thought were really important because it was a female you know, opinion of what was happening in the bar and how these boys spoke to each other. 
So I, I put that in to the film because it was important to have that perspective. And then when the duck shoot happened, we went back to those four boys again, two brothers and two friends. And that was because they wanted this smaller company in Adelaide wanted to tour um, four boys, the four four boys, four four actors um, in a smaller um, um, show. They only ran for like ninety five minutes because they didn't have the money to do a six person show. So all that um, stuff gets spoken about when when I'm. It's not so much about me bringing up people going, now I'm going to work on the same story. And if I'm going, thank God. I don't do that. <laughs> um, people ring me up and say, hey, there's something in that. But there was, you know, have you thought about maybe doing other stuff? And I go, no. Then I ring it back, go, yeah, I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe do this. And so there's, there's lots of what in the academic world they call discourse, you know, conversations, people chatting. And people saying, hey, we've only got 17 grand to, to go here for our leg festival and here, but if we pay you this, can we do this and this? And I go, and my aide and I go, yeah, we can do that. You just give me the rules about what it is that you guys are wanting. So that's a very real part of the industry, those conversations, mm -hmm. which people, uh, a lot of people don't really want to talk about and they think is about you know being bossed into doing something that you don't want to do. But it's not really. It's just about swerving around and working on stuff that that's good for you at the time as an artist. Yeah. Mm. Um, I've just got one question that I'll jump in before we get to your one. Uh, I've just sort of, you know, you just mm. talked about um, having a scene or scenes cut out of your film mm. by the director. Yeah. I guess. So what's that like as a writer, sort of having to compromise with the director over? Yeah, like that. yeah, I know it's it's horrible. It's the it's the elephant in the room in all productions that that between a screenwriter and a director, they're the two key creative people on the set, and you've put all this stuff into your film for a reason. Mm. You know, I want to tell this story and I want to put this scene in because there's this little thing that happens between these two characters, and then therefore it makes this scene make sense. Yeah. And everyone goes, ah, oh, that's fantastic, Marty, you're the best in the world. <laughs> um, and when it comes down to it, sometimes the conversations between the directors and editors or mm. producers cut out those scenes. Yeah. So when you get to the end and this happens, everyone says, I don't really understand that. Yeah. And they blame <laughs> you for it. Yeah. Yeah. They blame me. Yeah. 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 And why did your script fail? Yeah. Uh, my script <laughs> did not fail! <laughs> um, yeah, there's always trouble. Where there's, that, that's the... Um, that's the that's the hardest thing, I guess. You have to find people mm -hmm. that you can work with and trust. And sometimes contracts get broken. Mm -hmm. So you're meant to have contracts as a writer and a director that says, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to change that and da da da. But sometimes at the end, things mm -hmm. do get changed. Oh. And you cry yourself to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what field are you currently working? What field? I'm the, oh, sad to say, the academic field. I'm doing a PhD. Do you know what that is? Mm. If you find out, let me know. <laughs> um, it's it's that um, it's a part of part of university, a kind of um, postgraduate. So you go to uni, you do a bachelor of arts, and then you do a masters, and then you can do a PhD. And it's meant to be a PhD is meant to be about a new way, new research in an area. Um, so what I'm doing is a PhD in screenwriting practice. So what it actually is and what's involved. So everything I've talked about today, the idea of, um, cause, because people think screenwriting is about somebody writing a screenplay and handing it in. But that's not really what screenwriting is. Screenwriting is a lot of talking and a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting. <laughs> no, it's not fighting. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of different ways to actually um, perform screenwriting. You know, you create little documents like an outline or a treatment or a synopsis. And these are little half pages that talk about um, the narrative. And you could do a 40 page treatment, which was what was done for the new Star Wars, you know. So it was a really expansive, deta detailed document that's written in like a story form. And then from that, then they create three screenplays. 
in a different format. Yeah. So I'm writing a PhD just to try and update some of the screenwriting, how, how people think about screenwriting. Okay. And lucky last? Um, do you have any plays or movies to be published and what are you planning to work on next? Publish, publish is a really interesting word because I would, because <laughs> none of my plays are published in the sense of it being put into a, a book. But as I discovered when I started doing postgraduate work, published is can can mean performed as well. So are you talking about it, um, published in the sense of um, screenplays or plays being made into books? Or just small plays that you might be working on or more projects? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been, I've been um, mucking around with a, uh, a small play, a little three-hander, um, that I really like. And it's quite it's been with me for about nine years. It's changed a bit. And it's really interesting for some reason. Um, it's the best title. It's it's called it's called from the Matthew Notes. From the Matthew Notes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's just about discovering, you know. Um, one, one, uh, a guy that's um, walking around in a town and nobody knows who he is and he, has to, and he gets put into a mental ward and after a year and a half they still don't know who he is. So it's about trying to discover what's happened. And a detective coming in going, I think he's actually connected to a murder that happened two years ago. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, interesting. Scary. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully. Now, do we have any other questions? You got one more? Yeah. Um, what writing styles are you like to writing? Like, or do you enjoy writing? Do you enjoy writing? Non-fiction, fiction, fantasy, horror. Well, I used I used to write dr a lot of drama because you know, that's what I think. If, I mean, that's the essence of every, any genre is you know, whether it's horror or um, romantic comedy or sci-fi. There's always always has to be a drama in there. But I think when you start out. I think you kind of write dramas that are close to you in your life, but where I am now, I'm doing lots of weird sci-fi stuff. So at the moment I'm working on a screenplay that, um, <clears throat> and I have the last three screenplays have been science fiction. So at the moment I'm working on a screenplay that's um, a little uh, about a, a blind oceanographer and how she um, is fixing up the Pacific Ocean beacons that are meant to measure tectonic plate activity in the ocean and how they've actually gone wrong, something's happened, and she's responsible. So she goes out in a boat with five other oceanographers and tries to work out and discovers something weird. Mm. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Any more? I've got one more, but you guys go first. Yep. Um. How long does it usually take you to write a screenplay? Oh, I, oh that's a million dollar question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get asked that quite, quite a few times, quite often. I think it takes me about 15 weeks now on average. Whereas, you know, if a, if a play that I've been thinking about, uh, a, a narrative, a story that I've been thinking about for a long time, sometimes things can click into place and like, it takes about seven weeks to just to get get a draft down, get a first draft. It's, it's pretty unreadable because it doesn't really make any sense. So I have to go back to it about three weeks later. So I don't know, it depends on what makes you happy, I guess. You know, you could spend 30 weeks on a screenplay and get it perfect and you love it. It's the best thing ever. And you hand it to somebody and they go, I don't really understand that. And you, you kind of miss stuff as well because you get so close to a story. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of trouble that happens mm -hmm. in creating. Yeah. Um, so when you've done the writing process and you feel like it's finished, do you ever like workshop them or like do you, do you is is it the same as writing you know like a novel? Do, do they get edited or um, or do you just do you work sort of siloed like you write it and then you send it to your agent and so it happens like what what's the process like once you've written? the script, script and you feel like that's this is it this is the final draft of it yeah what happens from um, then? well at the moment i mean uh, if i write a play i send it to a director that i like and try and find out what what they're up to 
and if they liked it, and it's the kind of thing that they'd want to do or talk to me about, maybe. But, you know, the theatre industry is almost worse than the um, film industry in the sense that you have to kind of get ready in February, March, one year ready for, for 2000, and, you know, nine, two years later. Because they're planning programs. Yes, they're planning yeah. programs and meetings and saying yes to this, we go to print in July ready for that. So it's worse than a film because some of the films that you see now have uh, been around for eight, nine, ten years, some of the scripts. So it's not just about writing one screenplay sometimes. It's some it's it's about getting it out there, getting feedback, somebody changes it, somebody you still own it or then you get rid of it and you, you know, sell it for a million dollars and then that way you have to walk away. So the industry has lots of different um, uh, um, paths to sort of you know find you find find your way through. I guess that's why screenwriting is so difficult to understand. People go, so what, what do you do? Mm. <laughs> what, yeah. When, how do you? Yeah. That's pretty much more. It seems more kind of collaborative, you know. Right? Yeah. Whereas you know, I guess writing fiction, weird nation anyway. It's like you write your book, then yes, it's published. Yes, it's in the yeah, four hundred yeah. pages, yeah. and it's a different kind of work. Yeah. yeah. So screenplay writing is more about making sure that the map of vision and sound is timed out really, really well. So the format of a screenplay, interior, you know, cave, mm -hmm. and bats fly, and there's a small narrow shaft of light that comes through and he staggers around, he's got a whip yeah. and all of a sudden, <laughs> because when you um, <clears throat> watch a film, that's how fast the information is. Bang, bang, bang. You sit there, you go, oh. if, you, if you look at one minute of the film and see how fast it is, that's kind of what you need to do in a screenplay as well. Yeah. So it can't be like novel writing. All those film writing skills, um, I'm guessing you kind of learned them as you went rather than formally sort of at university. I know you went to WAPA. But... Yeah, yeah, I didn't go. I had friends that went to afters that did screenwriting yeah. and I would say, oh, should I go? And they said, no, it's not really, you know. Well, my problem was, why would I go to the school when I was actually getting work as a screenwriter? So there must be something in my work that people like that is... Um, set aside from what all these guys are learning. So it doesn't mean that I, I didn't read books. There's lots of screenwriting books that you pick up and read, read 10 pages, or someone says, hey, have you read that? And you go, yeah, I read a bit of that. And mm. Kind of glean from different sources, you know, the idea of how to do it. And also if you like a film and you like the way something's happened, like a bit of theatre or you find out who's designed it and you, you know, Google their name and you find out if there's something on the internet that's interesting and their little history, Wikipedia history, just to get, just to understand, you know, they live in Germany and they're 35 or they're 21 or they're, you know, doing young adult fiction. It's a good way to actually, you know, uh, feel, feel like it's the way you're thinking is okay. Mm -hmm. um. Yep, good. Um, yep. How much time per day or per week would you dedicate to writing screenplays? About three hours a day. Yeah, so that's a big chunk. You know. Yeah, but I reckon, you know, my, a part of my PhD is actually talking about um, that, that connection between what happens in my mind, which is not a lot, <laughs> um, screenwriter's mind to the screenplay, um, to the reader's mind and just trying to find that connection with what I'm imagining and what I think is interesting and the way that I write it when I hand it to a reader, are they getting the same thing? So, to answer your question, <laughs> um, writing is maybe three hours, but the thinking time and the, the, the stopping on a road and going, wait a second. But her hair gets caught in the generator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just write little, you know, I've got a little notepad and just write stuff and you don't have to carry a laptop around, your little face pad or whatever it is that you've got. You can just have a little biro and just write stuff. But yeah, I remember that's a really nice connection. That's something a bit different. So once you're a writer, unfortunately, you, ne you never stop. That's going to tie into my last question. Um, it seems like you kind of started in acting and sort of moved into writing. I don't know if that's a fair comment or not. Yeah. But yeah. why is that, do you think? Why, why did you 
you know, when you were young, younger, yeah. sort of start as an actor, and now mm. you seem to be a writer. Yeah, I, I did a lot of directing and producing. I did short films, and I produced everything. I shot films for friends, mm. um, and I did um, second AD work, and I did a little bit of um, production, sort of um, you know, carrying cables and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's more about that it's all sort of the same thing, but but acting and writing is is more creative. Mm -hmm. The the acting work that you do around a script and saying why why am I here? Why do I walk in with a watermelon? Mm -hmm. Why do I where did I get the watermelon from? So the director and you go oh maybe there's a field there and he gets a watermelon from there. and it's the same work that a screenwriter or a playwright does. So it's not as different as it seems. Yeah, it's all the same. Break it down. What did I do last night? This is the morning scene. What did I do last night? And when you watch the theatre, that's that's all the stuff that the, the actors and director have done. They've worked all that stuff out. So you begin of watching a play and it's the morning and somebody comes in with a fresh load of bread and it's set in 1920s, but they've had a conversation about what those characters have done for the week before and the day before. It's all the same work that a screenwriter does. How do I make this world interesting? Why has she got a loaf of bread? Why is she angry? Why does she slam it down? I'm going to write that. I'm going to slam it down with a fresh loaf of bread. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's all connected. Okay. All good? All right. Um, so that concludes our Press Club interview for today. And um, I'm sure that we've all learned something. I certainly have about the sort of intricacies of... Uh, film and TV and place because it's a bit mysterious to me, you know, <laughs> and probably to Ted as well. <laughs> yeah. um, but thanks very much for coming and seeing Architects today and no problem. Round of applause time. <laughs> right,